I'll take off my you, hat. You, you don't have to. Wear, the hat plays. Yeah, you, you I know, like the hat. You, and the the headphones are optional. They're oh, good because okay. they allow you to uh, hear slide this mic okay. right here. They allow you to you can hear yourself. Oh God, I that's want, the that's I the major that. benefit. Yeah. yeah, I'm good with that. I hear enough of myself. <laughs> nice. Hey, I feel you. I, I feel got you. enough of myself going on. Yeah, you know, I I'll say so. I've been lecturing for two years now, mm -hmm. and I have to talk a lot, and it's kind of balanced me out as a person. I think. Yeah. I was one of those guys that when you had to just say your name in class, I would almost vomit. Really? So I it's shocking that now you can put me in front of a million people. Yeah, I've been on TV talking to <laughs> talking to uh, anchors about like, uh, or news anchors about the Delta exhibition and things. They asked me from the Arkansas Art Center to come on and be on like the lunchtime, lunch crew yeah. news and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, okay. When I was, if you were to tell me that, like 12 year old Neil, I'd have been like, no effing way, man. I ain't doing that. I just was terrified to talk in front of people, but I always talked a lot, just not formally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have a lot of friends when you were, you know, teenage, high school? Yeah, man. I was a big athlete. I played everything. Really? That was back when you could play everything. And yeah. I mean, I did. I even bowled on a, on a team. <laughs> like, nice. I played football, basketball. You couldn't name it. And like, I, I'm not a big soccer fan, which is funny. I tease like Jesse, his kids do soccer. Other friends would do soccer. And, yeah. And, uh, I... I've always kind of like made fun of soccer and slammed it and things. And then my kids saw, I had an old photo album. We were visiting my mom and dad in South Dakota is where I grew up. And uh, my son runs across. He's like, there's like eight photos of you and a soccer team here. And I'm like, oh yeah, I played it. Wow. <laughs> I hated every minute of it. Cause you just played everything, man. That's what you did. There wasn't internet. There wasn't, you know. I know, right. Wait, wow. Well, did you grow up here in the South? Oh no. Okay, where are you I'm, from? I'm from the South Dakota. I'm from South, South Dakota. Dakota wow. City. Wow. Jesse just recently kind of moved up to your, your neck of the country in a way, I guess. We had a connection there because when I first met him, he uh, had told me years ago, like I'd already been here maybe a year or two, and he told me he lived in, I want to say it was like, uh, now I'm spacing, not Scott's Bluff. He's gonna be mad because he's gonna watch this. He told me I'm gonna listen to that. Dang it, Jesse, where were you from? It was uh, either, yeah, I forget. I can't even remember now. But it was like southern South Dakota, northern Nebraska, something like that, and uh, or even Wyoming might have been in Wyoming. But uh, we had a connection there, and he'd lived there. I think he did his high school years there, and that's where you identify. I think. Yeah. Like I identify, you know, did you grow up here in the South? I, I did. I grew up. Cause you got to interject. Clarksville, Arkansas, going. man. No, no. You hey, well, I'm going to give you a, f a formal introduction. Oh, okay. Dr. Neil Harrington. Is I'm it, not, is a it not a doctor. Not a doctor. Oh. That's a second time that's happened. Cause Billy reader was just on the podcast yeah. and he's well, got, he is a doctor. He's not. No, he's not. Yeah. No, he's not. Which he I always he thought is. he was like when I was going to college and stuff. So like, I just assumed Every professor. <laughs> like, it's better was, to assume. It really is for for the etiquette it reasons. Really, I, etiquette ways it is. It's yeah. A, he's a doctor of sailing. Yes. He, and a pirate. And a pi he's a doctor of piracy. Yeah. He does, uh, he does jujitsu. So I just saw him last night. He came to class. Does he really? Yeah, dude. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. There's so many people that do that. I know. And I got to quit messing with people. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a dangerous world. Out it there. is. You never know. And it's always the least suspecting looking people. Probably. And they're probably like real badass. <laughs> uh, there's a guy that in jujitsu named Eddie Bravo. He calls jujitsu people nerd assassins. They're not like they assassinate nerds. They are the nerds nerds who are also the assassins. you know well i learned that early on too because like i don't know and i've interrupted you a million no times no no already. this is this is what we're doing when here. i was uh in, you know it was really big the cage fighting was really big because it was just starting right yeah so it wasn't like it is now it was like any way anyway and there was that royce gracie yeah and we all wanted to watch we would rent them you know you'd go to the video store and you would yeah. rent the tape you probably did that too and you you wanted to get the ones with royce gracie on because you'd see him choking out huge behemoth 
guys like nobody could beat royce gracie yeah see what's cool now they've um inst- so this is how far it's come so like back it was back. it was when i when i graduated high school it was that show the ultimate fighter one exactly right ultimate so that was like the, the, there was right, the, that's where you, you are then the next surge yeah, 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 yeah. now all of that mm-hmm. and everything since is on ufc fight pass digital mm-hmm. streaming and you can literally just like it's just like isn't that crazy? You used to oh like, what God. did you have to use to go through to acquire? You had to like somebody had it checked out and you went and you had to oh, wait for them to the bring it back. Bring up the little tag. Yeah. You know? Like oh, dude. That, yes. And remember that? And yeah. All that. And my, I love my mother and she knew I love movies. And I would say things like, uh, you know, maybe I could, you know, I think I maybe I'd make movies or something like that when I get older. And she would be, she was a realist, you know, she'd be like, well, you know, you could probably own a video rental store. That's a good gig. She would the time. merits of owning the rental store. She mm. would like expound on, and I'm like, but that's a little different than making a movie, Mom. Like, I, I would like to make a movie, maybe or something like that. And she's like, Boy, you like movies, renting those movies. <laughs> like, and now, where are the video rental stores? Oh yeah, that's oh, what's crazy, yeah, man. Uh, I tell students when I was a kid, uh, you you had to rent the machine. Ooh, even this is yeah. even probably before you by the time you came up see we had we had a vcr in my house like my whole life and then nah, and then it man. was then it was dvd player i remember the first dvd yeah. bedazzled came out nice i believe that was the very first dvd ever i don't know i, I before dvds I'd, i had friends that had blu-rays or whatever those large discs what are those called laser Ooh. discs oh yes 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 they had laser discs and i've only the size seen those. Of an album i'm like what's that <laughs> like that's cool but they were wealthier friends that didn't live near me that was like in high school but they had laser discs yeah and uh no when i was a kid man you had your big zenith that was like a chest of drawers <laughs> you know with a screen this is in my it. record player right yeah, here totally, yes totally like that man and you rented the player and it had like a shoulder strap <laughs> like oh wow it it's like, like the bag, bag phone of vcrs yeah man you rented your vcr and you and you made sure all your cords were in there before you left the store and then you brought all your movies and then you get your pizza like you had to do all that and then so when you got home you you had a solid 25 minutes if you were quick just setting up your vcr because we didn't we didn't have one you know we yeah. didn't have we didn't have that and then you, you know i had to tweak it and all it sucked. did you ever it's, tape uh tape shows or movies off of television onto your oh, vcr tape constantly constantly yeah we had I'll, my dad ha- he played racquetball he was a real athletic guy and he always had a million friends my mom and dad never lived anywhere but their hometown rapid city south dakota well i guess my dad lived on the eastern side of the state growing up but mostly they've lived their whole they lived their whole lives in rapid city so he it's not that big a town it's like sixty thousand, which sounds big but it ain't yeah. they know everybody and he had a friend that worked for the cable company and this dude's like for fifty dollars i'll sell you this box and you can get hbo and all it had you you plugged in your box to your tv and it had a screw in there and when you turned it to the hbo channel which was like six or something you just manipulated that screw with a screwdriver and you got we had free hbo for you and you could tape stuff on it oh nice yeah i mean and i wasn't the only i think everyone on my side of town had one of these I don't know how the hbo people. was like a delicacy when i was a kid <sighs> like they were they would do the free preview weekends oh and stuff. yeah man oh man yeah nostalgia it was yeah when that hbo comes spinning around and you went inside the zero and all the lights kind of went it was magical man yeah. that was my mgm lion roar was the HBO coming down? You're like something good's about to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fraggle Rock. <laughs> you know, it's like their originals were cool even then. But it was, it was intense. Yeah, it was cool. I had a man. I the then when you are talking about boxing would have been huge on HBO, which it still. Uh, which actually they just got out. They got out of the boxing business. You know, yeah. I. It's like I kind of catch some fights and catch some of that now. I'm not as big into it as I was when I was younger, but. I can remember just watching, I love the wide world of sports. You could see an amazing boxing match or you might see like figure skating mm. or something, but like it was kind of more fun than, I don't know. I, it, yeah, we all think about it. It's so nostalgic now, but I think, I think I'm interested in, as you said, doc, we talked about Jesse's documentary and stuff. I love documentaries and I think it's because 
You had to watch. The, like, if that was on, that's what you're watching. I know. You're it's, watching Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom because there's no Nickelodeon. So you're watching, you know, Jacques Cousteau or show or one of those because I wasn't interested in any of that stuff. I, I'm having a hard time not cussing. Can you it, not cuss? Well, we can totally do that. Okay. I mean, so you know. I will loosen up then. Yeah. Yeah. But, totally. Make yourself at home. Okay. I mean, look around. That's, yeah. No, yeah. it's not. But, well, so, yeah, man, I, it, I, and I talk about that to my wife too because, she's my age as well so we share a lot of you know i'll mention weird shows like we didn't have all the cartoon stuff all these kids it's so crazy now okay so what cartoons did you have because the one that i like to remark on when i was a kid that like looking back i'm like my parents let me watch that ren and stimpy mm. That's a dark show, man. I was in man. college by then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in high school. I was by like, then. I was like, it was you know, super teenage-ish. dark, but it was funny. It, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was really funny. I I loved Ren and Stimpy. I mean that that kept me involved, I guess, because I always drew, and I thought maybe I wanted to be a cartoonist, um, or I didn't know how any of that worked really, right? Because there was no template in South Dakota. And my folks were blue collar. Neither one went to college. They were just, you know, workers. My dad was like a delivery guy. Like when you go to the airport and they lose your bag and then a dude shows up with it. That was my dad in rap. <laughs> like I've had he, to deal with a couple of those. Yeah, people, he, yeah, he did that. And then my mom was like a secretary for different companies. And the longest one being the hometown paper, which was really cool because she kind of knew what all was going on because yeah. everybody liked her. She was like the head, she was the head secretary, you know, like director of human resources. She was, but uh, there was no template for getting into cartooning or anything. But to answer your original question, I loved Ren and Stimpy, but like growing up, man, it was all like, couldn't wait to get home to see, you know, He-Man. Oh yeah. Or yeah, yeah, I'll even go back farther. Thundercats. Thundercats. Even when I was younger, I would get up early because on Saturday morning was your only cartoons, right? And it started at six. And at six was the Smurfs. Oh. And if I missed the fucking Smurfs, there was hell was to pay on. at breakfast. Someone's yeah. getting yelled at. Man, they didn't I, wake to, me up I had to watch the Smurfs. Smurfs in secret because my dad did not like. He thought it was a bad show. He was kind of an uber religious dude. I could see that. Yeah, and well, I was there's just Azriel, like, uh, ooh, Gargamel. Oh, yeah. There's some, there's some freaky stuff there. Yeah, a lot of dudes hanging out with each other. Yeah, he was, he was paranoid about it. I saw, so I just watched it in secret. It's like some of my earliest rebelling, watching that and Casper the Friendly Ghost, man. That yeah, yeah that's so. I could see how because I had read how people I don't know my folks were pretty look at what yeah that's what we were talking about kind of I asked yeah. you if you would grew up in the south yeah. I mean just to kind of like put a no yeah no I grew up in the north I'm an you know I've really acclimated yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey hey well you no more could you acclimate than hanging out recently or at least I saw you fo photographed with former Arkansas president Bill Clinton so we're having this event in Little Rock and I'm kind of dreading it. I've done these. It's so I'm a printmaker, and you make prints, and you make editions and copies. It's kind of like making uh, stamps and things. And so we, I had had a couple students do it, and my wife is the president of the Arkansas Society of Printmakers, and we decided to have a, a steamroller printing event. So instead of using a printing press, you're going to roll over your inked block with paper on it. You're going to roll over it and print it using a steamroller. And we thought visually it'd be really cool to have Tammy, my wife, drive it because like this little Asian gal's driving. It's going to bring people over. And we're like, man, this event, it had been postponed a couple times. It's behind. It used to be called the Butler Center, but it's between the Little Rock Library mm -hmm. and now it's called galleries on the square by clinton avenue there down by the river market yeah. and uh so i have my students there we have we have a decent turnout it's going well tammy's driving the steamroller and my student addison graham went in to use the facilities you know use the restroom she comes out bill clinton's in there looking at the gallery and she just being a um just she's such a lovely person very happy all the time and just knows 
you know, no bounds. She just goes over. She's like, President Clinton, you should come outside. My pre- my professor and uh, some other printmakers are making these steamroller prints. He's like, oh, I might, you know, I might come out there. And she comes outside and she's all excited. And she goes, uh, she goes, Nick, I think she calls me Harrington, you know, Harrison, Harrington, you, you should sell your print to Bill Clinton. I'm like, shut up, Addison. You know, I was like, teasing her like because i thought she was giving me shit like shut up addison that bill okay right and then we pull the print she's like no really he's you should sell it to him she never said like he's here or none of that no content yeah, we pull my print and i'm the last one because we're i'm one of the organizers we're pulling everybody else's prints first we pull my print i have my two students that are helping me bill clinton walks out of the group walks out of the crowd and you're you're dumbstruck yeah you're like it's like seeing the beat he's he's energetic whether you like him or not he's he brings an energy and he did he did it juvenate it rejuvenated the crowd it was long in the day it was hot we're all tired suddenly there's this energy like just crackling man and i said hey man how's it going and i was all dirty with ink and i said can we fist bump because i don't want to get you dirty he's like yeah and we fist bump and then he goes uh I was looking at some of your prints over here, you know, from the people, and they look good. And I said, yeah. And he goes, there's one with a skeleton on it talking in a microphone. He goes, I should buy that and set, send it to President Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I said, please don't. Please don't. And, uh, he was oh, cool. Like, he, he rapped with us and stuff. And That's I awesome. introduced my wife and said, yeah, she's the president of this organization. And he's like, oh, it looks cool, man. And he walked around and... He, he's a cool dude i mean he does yeah. he has a persona that's just like yeah he just seemed like a friendly guy he was wearing flannel he looked like a 90s throwback it was super cool yeah and i mean just think like you know with chuck norris you've got all these like jokes like it's become like a part of culture like in so many different ways I mean, it'd be cool. I, I don't care who it is. It, it's got to be cool to meet an American president. It, it really was. I didn't think, I don't know. I've met a lot of cool people over the years being famous and not. And I thought, oh, yeah. but it was kind of neat. I would say on my Facebook, not that I count the number of likes, but I would say this topped my other, my previous amount of uh, record of likes. And that one was uh, when I bought a truck. <laughs> And I mean, I post all my art. I've had children. <laughs> Bought that truck. 200 Bam. likes. Congrats, 200 man. Likes. You made it. Bill Clinton on there <laughs> beats it. Like, those are my two oh, biggest wow. like, likes on the Facebook page were uh, buying a new truck. And then uh, people who I've been friends with that have never liked anything I put on there commented and liked it. Oh, wow. Some I know are hardcore staunch Republicans still were like, that's rad. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's too, like, that's something that's cool about Bill Clinton, too, is I think that uh, for like Arkansans, mm-hmm. I mean, because I teach Arkansas history at Moralton. Right, right, right. And it's just, you know, I talk about him from that perspective without getting when when i do uh 45 to present the time period and yeah. you know uh, united states history but it's just man it's 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 a cool topic yeah. I, I like i like the political history of the united states and yeah. then of arkansas in which bill clinton is like our most notable thing to talk about and honestly it's it's fun to move around like have you lived in other states i have not man just when from you, clarksville i yeah. mentioned a minute ago when you do you kind of know you you start learning who's from those other states like uh, fame's unreal fame's a big it's it's a big deal it is it's, yeah uh, when i lived in we went to graduate school my wife and i in wichita kansas uh don johnson's from wichita oh nice um, you know I forget the football player. There's a f- couple football players. There's, and then you start learning people from Kansas and this and that. But I would say Arkansas by far, because we've only really lived in South Dakota, Kansas, and Arkansas. But Arkansas has a ton of famous. I mean, Johnny Cash. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Campbell, Levon Helm. Oh, I was about to say Levon yeah, Helm. Lead Belly. Yeah. I mean, there's tons uh sister rosetta tharp i mean there's billy bob thornton billy bob thornton's another one that 
is huge and it just goes on and on i mean there's just so many or and there's so many people passed through here and spent time here you know who's living here right now that surprised me so like uh, you commented uh so we're both todd snyder uh oh my god i'm a big i don't tell me Todd Snyder lives here. No, no, no. no. He, he lives, lives in, in Nashville. Nashville yeah, but it, Memphis. he lives in Memphis. Does uh, he live Nashville. In I'm pretty is sure. Nashville? I'm pretty sure. But his last show in Arkansas. It is Nashville. You're right. Was uh, in Little Rock. Right. And, and I didn't go. Like Michael anything. Booty went. Michael Booty, my friend. He's an English professor at uh, Moralton. He's been on the podcast. He went and he meets Todd like every time. Just like runs into him, gets him to sign his book or whatever. But that guy, Judge, uh, what's his Reinhold. name? Yeah, Judge. Judge Reinhold. He yeah. lives in Little Rock. He married a. He married, I think, an Arkansas gal. Yeah, I think I had read that. Okay, because like Mary Steenburgen is from North Little Rock, and she's married to Ted Danson. Oh, and yeah. they come back a lot. They and I do. Think they're that's, a, that's why Ted Danson comes to mm-hmm. Arkansas. She's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think for a while they even owned that restaurant that uh, South. It's now South on Main, but it was something else right before that. Like at not Atlantic Monthly. That's like a magazine, but this. It had another name, I want to say, and I want. I think Mary Steenburgen owned it or was a co-owner. But anyways, I th- she's from North Little Rock, and oh uh, yeah, Ted Danson. Cold, Golders here. travels. I mean, yeah, it's great. it is. But for Todd, <laughs> Snyder, I am such a huge. I have tur- tried to turn more people on to Todd Snyder, and when you do, and they get it, they're like. This is the greatest thing ever. It, I can't really believe is. I went so long without yeah. i mean i've only listened to him I, I i never even really listened to his music and went and saw him live and i was just like his concert at the bluebird cafe which you can watch on youtube and it's there's four parts i would highly re- if you haven't watched it, it it's probably the quintessential the closest you're going to get to his album the storyteller mm-hmm. like i've read his book have you read his book his book's really good i have good. not i have it's not it's very I don't have good it. It's books really good. There's a few similar stories, but he'll expound on them. Like how he got kind of a break with uh, Jimmy Buffett and how Buffett was pissed at him for not playing a couple of his songs that were hits like the, um, um, I forget, Talking Seattle Grunge Blues, where, you know, he, you know the one I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he didn't want to play that live because he just didn't want to be gimmicky at that time or something and jimmy buffett's like throwing fruit at him like at the beginning of the book like you goddamn idiot that's your hit like why aren't you fucking playing that every night it's like yeah. playing all this other folky bullshit you gotta come out with that man todd is such a unique persona oh he is i, I mean and you just like when i look at that guy's face mm-hmm. i mean i'm like what have you he just look i don't know i'm What's, just like it looks like he's been through a lot of life and seen a lot of experiences and emotion and especially like every time i've seen him live it's like almost me to you he, yeah well he grew up he's from near portland i learned from the book i mean i when i really like a musician i really get into like yeah get into him and like when i was into john prine i like research his whole life you haven't I, picked up yeah bob dylan, dylan and all spread that. panic for me yeah but uh todd grew up like near um He's from Beaverton, Oregon. You can hear him tell the story about the mushrooms and being on the football team. Have you ever heard that? I heard that one. Oh, my God. As soon as this is over, we're going to listen to it because I never get tired of hearing about it. Okay, yeah. Where he takes mushrooms and he's on the football team. And it's, yeah, it's incredible. But he's from Beaverton, Oregon. And he really, you think he's from the South, but he's from, he's from up North. And I relate to that because one of the criticisms I get in my artwork is you know people say man you make really like some really southern looking art like when i look at your work because i know you've had dean woods on here and he said that to me and some other people uh jeff woods you know yeah yeah, yeah. i like your work because it's this it has this real specific kind of i saw you with woods uh in your sculpture yeah 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 yeah. great guy seeing your artwork is actually why i originally wanted to have you on um when you were doing with the uh like something you just kept putting up that had all these reds in it mm-hmm. and i think it was, it was a larger yeah, series carving yeah, yeah when i'm carving i'm carving out that red leaving the wood those are wood cuts i'm doing but one of the criticisms i well you know neil's not from the south and uh i guess kind of like todd he makes kind of southern references and he's in he kind of would slant himself i think a folky but yet country folk he's i would say safely and um you just 
I think sometimes when you're not from an area, you might notice things that maybe people that have lived there their whole life don't know or think are special. Uh, John Fogarty, as I mentioned before, yeah. he's from Oakland. Like he's from, yeah. he's from near San Francisco, right? And he wrote all that shit without ever, he'd never been in the South. And he, when you think of John Fogarty and CCR, you think Swamp Rock. He'd never been in a, and he'll, he'll be the first to tell you that. Uh, Stephen Foster, you know, Camp Town Races. Uh, I love to read history too. And uh, Stephen Foster, one of the first American songwriters, right? he'd never been south of Pittsburgh. And he wrote all those classic, you think of country or uh, early Americana songs, Camp Town Races, which was huge in the south. And um, now I'm spacing out. What's another <laughs> Stephen Foster song? But you don't know who I'm talking about. Yeah. He's from Pittsburgh. He never went. He was, he's not from the South. He was never out West. He lived in the city. He's like, I need to write some shit that sells. And they were buying, you know, original tunes then. And so I, I kind of feel the same way. Like you just kind of put yourself in that situation and do you think that kind of speaks like to the larger like your uh, abilities and larger understanding to be eclectic in a, a larger cultural sense versus regional you know what i'm saying is it like uh you, you think you don't maybe some people don't notice the things in the in a certain region like what you're saying i'm from uh arkansas so i'm maybe I'm like, yeah, I do this. I drive past this every day. But if somebody just moves here. Yeah. So, I mean. I think so. Yeah. I think it does. It allows you to. Uh, I'm not a huge traveler. Like, people. I'm a homebody. I like to stay home and play music and watch movies, read books, and make art and things. But I travel up here. You know, I travel my mind mostly through daydreaming. I've always been a daydreamer. But hopefully, I think I notice uh, things. And you have to. to to draw things accurately um you visually you have to notice spatial relationships and um yeah hope, hopefully you do notice things that are different reader was telling me yesterday that he made all of his students go draw a tree <laughs> for, for class if they, if they did some other stuff they had to go find all the fire hydrants and uh, it's for photography class oh uh, yeah. all the fire hydrants and cameras on campus and then he goes and after you do that draw a tree but while they were doing that he was saying he was sitting for like an hour it's on the back porch of the library there studying the architecture yeah uh, yeah you just i don't know i can I think also because we didn't grow up at our age, it becomes a generational thing. I don't have to look at my phone the whole time or be entertained. And boy, I notice it with my kids. I got two teenagers and yeah. my daughter lives like that. And it's so disheartening and it's, it's a struggle to get her to notice things. Mm. And I can just sit and just look at what's out there, man. You can notice some crazy stuff. You can, I've been in airports and done very long drawings of people because they don't look up from their phone. It's perfect. And then if they do look up, I just act like I'm not drawing. And then they'll look back at their phone. I mean, they won't move at all. It's like perfect model wow. for your drawings because they're just so engrossed in that phone. And I what don't do know. What do you think about all that? I don't like any of that shit. I was I was a long holdout. I haven't had a phone. That's an OG iPhone. Real isn't it? long. I haven't had one real long. This is the second one I had that I've had because the first one I I wouldn't advise this, but in a huff I smashed it trying to get my daughter into the damn bathtub and to show her <laughs> I was serious. I obliterated my phone. <laughs> All right, it happens. Every guy I tell that to is like, yeah, fucking A, man, you bet. But she listens to you, yeah, I said, yeah, she got in there. Any girl hears that story that I've talked to, like my wife, I think, and they're mortified. They're like, how could you? Or just, you need to have that anger another way or something. But, you know. And I, mean, I, don't I don't think know. I know. It was in the moment. I don't I think just, I know a dude that hasn't broken their phone. I don't have children yet. My wife and I are talking about it like every day. We're in major planning phase. I have two dogs. Or totally not. different yeah you think that's the same is it preparatory in any way because you know um, i like to tell with that you got to remember to feed them eventually yeah yeah i i think people that you know talk about their pets sometimes no offense 
that means you're going to be offended. Uh, <laughs> I think, well, I got dogs. I'm a good dog, dad. It's not even the same. Jesus. Yeah. It is so, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. I stayed at home as a, I was, this job I have now, you know, I've been at tech like 19 years. This is my 19th year, but I was a one-year visitor professor i've been every le- level of something i've been an adjunct i've been a one i was a one-year visiting professor and it ended and my wife we have the same degree like a couple of real idiots <laughs> and because you know you're basically my competing. wife and i have the same degree yeah. too yeah. she has a double degree though and then i went and got my master's so but we both have history degrees yeah. so you're kind of competing against each other for like limited jobs because jobs in our in art too oh, are yeah. very limited and people get them just sit on them forever and so my job ended and she was an adjunct here and at the university of the ozarks yeah and so that was a department of one it, and she was an adjunct and he was a really great guy and he he said uh how would you like to work here and she her head about exploded because he was basically saying how would you like a tenure track job long story short they had to do a search and all this but he really liked her and he was a long-term respected guy there and so we were hoping but you never know people say things all the time so we weren't for sure but so we she got it she had an interview and you know they went to the big conferences and all that and they still gave they gave her the job and now she's been there she's still there oh yeah she's a okay. professor uh, there yeah great. she's a professor at that school i'm a professor at tech that's great for you guys huh it wasn't seamless i i became an adjunct for about four years but oh, we decided wow. to have children uh because we had already been married about uh seven years by that time five six years and uh, we were just so poor. We waited. Uh, we've been married 22 years now. Yeah, my wife. That's what I was yeah. just telling my class that today. I was like, because uh, in one, in Arkansas history, we we're talking about poverty in Arkansas, mm-hmm. and and we were talking about having kids. Yeah. And I was like, uh, there is a reason that I I was just explaining my my theory is I was like I went after high school, got my education was 28 when i graduated with my master's yep. still Dude. took like four years for me to start working full-time yeah. as a professor i mean wife and i have the gym mm-hmm. uh so that's actually so how you and i met for circle is you brought your son right to river valley martial arts yes actually and, i brought i met you when you worked for dr gleason oh that too yes and around that same time me, and and you were i had read a story about you I think maybe you were renting part of a gym or you had started something. I'm like, Hey man, weren't you in the paper for martial arts or Forco yeah, or yeah. something? And I was thinking about maybe getting into it. And I was like, I, 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 my kids were so, my first kid was so young. You can't do anything. <laughs> but anyways, I thought, Oh man, if I ever did it, that guy seemed cool. I would go take a class with him. Hey, thanks. <laughs> but uh, I, no, honestly, I really did. I even told Jesse that you can ask him. <laughs> Because when he told me he was going there, I said, that's where I would Man, go. Man, I miss Jesse, dude. Yeah, I miss him. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know you guys are way, way close. I just love seeing him at the gym. I would always be over uh, talking to him and joking. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, man, but we he came on the podcast a couple of times. We, Yeah, he, I got great out. family stories with him because our families would hang out with another friend of ours, Sean Coleman, who's a professor of biology sean and jennifer jennifer coleman teaches nursing at tech they're the reverse of me and my wife tammy i work with sean's wife at tech and sean works with my wife at the ozarks well and then jesse and his wife were recently at tech and the ozarks yes Mm -hmm. but i oh man yeah it really goes deep but jesse would you know like nine million children he does uh that he knows about even (laughs) and some of the stories i would always love because i could he would always relate you know because our kids are the same ages basically and uh one story i always love to remind him of is they were all sick and you know his fan they're always getting sick because they just kids are always sick and he goes he take he was taking one of his kids to the emergency room and i'm probably telling this wrong i'm sure he'll set me right but he had taken his kids to the emergency room and one of them goes in and the other two kids had a soda and it spilled and one of the kids is on the floor slurping it out of the oh, carpet. Oh, man. Goes, I look at him and say, this is why we're always sick. And I'm like, 
I think so, buddy. <laughs> I think that's why you guys are sick. They're drinking soda out of the carpet. <laughs> at the hospital. At the hospital. <laughs> in, in the <laughs> I loved this. I mean, he would have, because oh. he's kind of like me. We Neither one of us have any shame. Like, anything stupid, we, we can't wait to tell. Uh, he sent me something the other day where he had hulked out in class and, like, ripped his shirt. And he had a big old hole in oh, it. Man. So, one of the first thing he does is send me and Sean a picture of it going, rip my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did there, buddy. <laughs> he's like, I hulked out in class, gesticulating. <laughs> oh wow! You're the gesticulator. But yeah, so we're we can't wait to tell people when we do you know incredibly stupid shit because it's just fun. If you can't laugh at, it's best when you can laugh with somebody about it. But if you can't laugh at yourself, I mean, I don't want to know you. It's. I really enjoyed that, so I missed that because, yeah, he couldn't wait to tell me something dumb. I couldn't wait to tell him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least we do have a much greater means of communication than writing a letter now. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like I was talking with somebody about this yesterday. I've been fascinated by this. Is Thomas Jefferson in the 1780s invented this thing that uh, oh, copied the, uh, his yeah. letters. Oh, yeah. Polygraph is what yep. he called it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, thanks, dude, because now we have your letters. <laughs> Fan, like way to realize that oh. we were gonna that those are valuable and we were gonna need them later i know to make all of his in triplicate or whatever yeah isn't that amazing yeah i think they even have that the machine he invented i have to used. look in that I, i've seen it that. on something maybe it was a biography i saw it man. on the ken burns documentary that's probably where i that's saw man i love those ken burns stuff yeah I really enjoyed the country one. Up I haven't seen the it last yet. Two. I haven't seen it yet. Is it? Is it, how many? How many parts is There's it? There's like eight parts. Or something. Yeah, I've been watching the Civil War one. Oh yeah. Um, and it's like whoa, fifteen or something. Yeah. And then uh, the West is the one I want to check out after really, that. I haven't yeah. seen all through. Uh, I've seen a lot of the Civil War clips and bits and pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, wait, actually, I got. You remember, oh, you remember Doctor to Black? Oh yeah, yeah. I got his book, oh, Fire and Sword, cool. man. Arkansas Civil War. Very cool. Yeah, I know. I love all that stuff too. It's really interesting. I love um, whenever my wife gets these free books. It seems like every time I pick a historical fiction, <laughs> she'll be, like, "Oh, here's a mystery one. Here's that. Oh, historical fiction. I'll take that." And they're almost always Civil War, you know, because it's just a, it's you can just riff in so many ways. It's just rife with ripe with di- different. Yeah, which can take it. I, one thing I picked up on this time through is just the larger Civil War in the Ozarks. Missouri slash, because Missouri didn't secede, but was a slave state. Right. And yeah. I, I just, uh, I had found this uh, lecture that Dr. Black did talking about, and yeah, there's another guy that's like a, I don't even think he's a historian. I believe he's like a folklorist. Uh, Brooks Blevins. Brooks Blevins, yeah. Yeah, uh, right. And he's, Scott and, told me about, no, Brian Hardman. Do you know Brian Hardman? Mm, no. From, uh, the University of Ozarks English professor, another good buddy of mine, told me about Brooks Blevins yeah. and told me about Randall, um, oh, what's his name? Can't even think of his name now. He wrote like uh, p- "Pissing in the Snow" and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, Randolph, mm, can't think of his last name now. Yeah, I'm not but sure. He 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 gathered all of these uh, stories from around the Ozarks, and um, like uh, another book of his is called "Who Blowed Up the Schoolhouse." Uh, he had really great titles vance randolph vance randolph there we go you should read some of his work. i will i'll look if into you it. haven't Those it's amazing tales. he ended up working at u of a uh for a while way a long time ago and he he would write for the outdoor like field and stream magazines and he would go out and like gig frogs or something then write I've been write frog about gigging. it and, what's that i said i've been frog gigging yeah, i'm not yeah. happy i'm not proud of it but i've been frog gigging he would go out with 22s and there would be pictures of him and like a lady and they'd be dressed up with like hip waders just like sh- with like lugers <laughs> like shooting frogs man and he would write a story about out it there too it. oh yeah. that's what i remember as a kid we'd yeah. be we'd be gigging frogs and be like oh there's a water moccasin over there yeah yeah, and, uh, he but he he has a lot of he has a lot of really interesting stories uh, and great books that I think you would like. And Brooks, 
Blevins folds into that. Yeah, see, that's uh, Brooks's stuff. Uh, it intersects a lot oh, uh, yeah. with, especially once you start getting into the Ozarks history. Mm-hmm. Uh, and De Black had done a lecture on the uh, at a conference that Brooks Blevins was at. I have to check and see um, who else is at the conference. Maybe this Vance guy was there. I don't know. Well, he's um, been dead. A oh, he's long been. Time. Oh, this yeah, is. Uh, he's okay, quite yeah, old. I saw some of his stuff. Uh, okay, yeah, he we're talking fifties. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, he probably passed away in the fifties. This would be I, stuff Brooks is probably he's elaborating writes about on. Yeah. Vance Randolph, who was quite the um, character himself. Because I want to say he comes from back east and then made his way out, kind of a Hemingway-esque type of guy. Um, again, another transplant that comes south and just sees how neat it is. I mean, besides the weather, I really Arkansas has been really good to me. Uh, I just, the heat just man i um this type of year uh and it's been like it's been a real wet year it's, it's been a rip but winter is what I always like i'm i flourish around here in the summer oh really the heat doesn't really bother me oh. so much but i last year man i got bronchitis not once but two times and i don't know why if it was just the weather or what i'm all on my egg and I, i've been doing everything to try and just prep for this winter really? but yeah the arkansas winters are what get me really yeah man i love the winters uh, yeah i'm cold, sure is, is it reminiscent of your of of growing up for you was it colder it, colder in uh oh south dakota yeah. yeah man my birthday's in september and sometimes it might snow here it's a hundred billion degrees in September. It's one of the hottest oh, months. Oh, I know. Yeah, September, August are the hottest months, really. Where in South Dakota, it might it might snow in, in September, or it might at least be pleasant. Yeah, <laughs> and like I can remember countless times on Halloween, you just dress, you put on long johns, and then you put on your costume to go out because there might be two feet of snow, and you went. Man, I don't even know if I've ever even seen two feet of snow. Oh my God, I've seen so. Like, I mean, it's probably, I've seen close to that, but. Yeah, it's, it, the, you would plug your, I would thought it was funny when I think I asked somebody even in Kansas, I'm like, uh, do you guys plug your trucks in at night? They're like, what do you mean? Plug in? You pl- in trucks like in South Dakota have like a, a plug in for your engine block and you go to bed at night, you plug it in so it stays warm because it'll be down below freezing for hours yeah. and you, you want it to start in the morning. So you plug in your truck. I can remember my mom yelling, did you plug in your truck tonight? And you'd go outside in the cold. Oh, man, I forgot. <laughs> Knock the ice off the thing and plug into an extension cord. Oh, and maybe wow. now they make cars better than that up there, but I'd have to plug in my truck. Maybe and, I have some sort of vague memory of my dad plugging in his truck when yeah, I was a kid. I don't know why. Plug it in to keep it warm. Just yeah. To, yeah. It was it's just a different world up there. Um, but Yeah, well, yeah. You, you guys probably had to deal with like the... Um, like corrosion under on the undersides of the cars right oh uh, yeah like rust and mm-hmm. stuff yeah oh yeah they rust out yeah, yeah they, they would didn't... salt the roads and all that and it was always it's the same old story that's it's a tired joke but yeah just when you finish your driveway here comes the loud <laughs> you got four feet of snow at the end of your driveway you're like motherfuckers <laughs> like i just cleaned my driveway and there would be you know they come by and they they're they're just they're under the clock yeah. so they they drive by and they just shoot a whole bead of <laughs> snow across the end of your driveway and you ain't getting out unless you clear that so now you've got another hour of just How like frustrating, God damn it. man you would be shoveling that stuff out and I mean, it was a lot of fun, too. I mean, in, uh, I went to college in Vermilion, South Dakota, which is University of South Dakota. One of the colleges I went to, it took me about three colleges to finish. But I ended up getting my degree from University of South Dakota. And downtown was like a hardware store and like nine bars. And there's so much snow, there's no place to put it. So what they do is they pack it in the middle of the road and they kind of cut out like entryways. <laughs> so at night you would go out and you would you'd be drinking and you'd go from one bar and you know at that town you would kind of start at one and then it just kind of roamed like it was just kind of a roving party and you'd you'd end up back at the one you started at four hours later but really as you're going across the street you kind of poke your head out to make sure a car's not barreling down because yeah if you ran through you know you'd get hit so you'd kind of lean out and look okay nobody's coming you would cross the because they would just have sections cut out so you could go between the bars I don't know if it's still like that. I haven't been there in the wow. winter time in a long, but it was like that in the nineties. That's when I was there. Do you, uh, do you travel back? You still have family up, up North? You travel back? Very I often? do. Uh, we travel up there sometimes. My mother passed about two years ago, which is the worst thing ever in life. 
when your mother goes. I was very close to my mom. She died about two years ago. And my dad's uh, still in Rapid City. And I got a sister that lives in Sioux Falls. And then Tammy's from South Dakota. So her, so South Dakota is like a big rectangle. And I'm from the western side. And she's from the eastern side. So we kind of drive up to the eastern side, spend a couple days, and then do the long burn across the nothing <laughs> so yeah. how, how far of a drive is that from either place from here from here is about 18 hours but we break it up yeah you know can you, you pit stop at jesse's on the way now i'd like to yeah i'd like to you i think we're gonna try get, to y'all it's kind of the other carpet. direction kids can get you sick <clears throat> yeah yeah we're gonna all drink soda out of the carpet <laughs> like the old days oh man well man we and we <laughs> speak of jesse too you know we would always have these fourth of july parties at our friend sean's house in clarksville and he lives out you would know because you grew up there but you know that uh gas station that's on the same road as the recycle area and the pool and the, there's a sonic and yeah it kind of yeah. keeps going and they go to the beer brit you know if you keep going yeah, down that yeah, road yeah, well he lives right by where you would turn to go to the country club yeah 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 and so my our buddy lives there and man we would go shoot fireworks off there and it got crazy like we're just nuts i mean you get me and jesse together and sprinkle sean on that and we just yeah so and sean, like jesse doesn't drink or nothing he's just a goofball <laughs> so, like we just get crazy <laughs> Jesse, we jo we used to joke around this all the time. How I came into contact with Jesse was he went to church where my parents went to church when I was a kid. Oh wow! Right, so like right when Jesse first moved to to Clarksville hmm. and started, um, I guess he lived in Clarksville at that <laughs> he time. Did. Right? He yeah, did. Yeah, uh, on like yeah. Fulton Street or something like that. Yeah. Right. So like I lived on Central Street, which was in the same vicinity. But I remember him and his family coming to, to um our church and like uh he would joke because he won like youngest parent award or some or something some very like nice. some made up thing they're like nice. you we're gonna recognize this guy you know youngest parent award. yeah it was like some some sort of award about his age and his parenting or uh, something about being a dad like some sort of <laughs> Some sort of thing like that, you know, it's a very Pentecostal, yeah. but wow. um, that is how I first knew him. So when he started coming in the gym, I was like, oh, dude, I remember you. You went to my parents' church when I was a little kid. And he was just like, oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, Trinity Chapel, dude. And he was just like, oh, I did go there. And then we established. So did you ever take your kid, uh, do your son to River Valley Martial Arts and to do karate? We did did see so i may have helped you you may have you when you came me early on that yes, first time yes yes and, and it was early on when you had videoed me at the gallery with dr gleason yeah. that's what it is yeah i came yeah. in well, and kyle was there kyle yeah yeah uh, kyle bennett great guy yeah runs a good thing and i was moving from another one that wasn't so great and we kind of oh like, i remember that I remember part like, too yeah, yeah i was like dude about, it's like, not this better not, not be one of these things you're like i hear it all the I, time I, I st that is it that is imagine it. how many times i've heard that Probably since well, yeah it's still going on who was that one anyway yeah just i let it go yeah but no he had a great experience with that jake just grew my son just kind of grew tired of yeah. he had too many other things you had to kind of pick at a certain age like i was saying i played everything i even i did karate i did football basketball soccer baseball bowling league there got to a point with my son it was like well you either need to step it up with martial arts or you can do football and he was really starting to really want to do football and baseball and, and so we just went that route and i felt bad i donated all of his gear and all that to them because you know you end up buying all this shit yeah, you, you do kids. you do and uh no it was a really good experience we we ended on a really high note we were there with the big panda yeah and, yeah we, see po was in the i was uh running was a program it. with them for 23 months yeah and then i ended up uh in 2012 we opened our own spot. You were at that upholstery place or whatever. Yes, okay. I remember. Yes. I saw because I always thought, I'm going to try that. I'm going to go. Yeah. And then I just. It, Man, it's. you ended up another place, I think. Yeah, 2300 West Main Center over yeah. there by uh, uh, Snell Laboratories. What yeah. else is in there? Um, there was that Herbalife place over there for a while. The right, right down in there. Yep, the little strip mall. Yeah, it was that. it was a good spot. And then we bought our own building, and we I just sold it, it actually, oh, and we bought another building. You're, you're where I've rented, 
rented uh, the old jump zone or whatever. It yeah. Was. So well, uh, so um, we were. Uh, let's see where we we're at. Uh, we were like a construction warehouse where we're at. We're over by, kind of by Stobie's now. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we purchased, and we haven't closed on until November 22nd, but the old Back to Basics gym. Oh, Back to Basics gym. Yeah. Yes. I was thinking of the other place, I think, that now. Isn't there another one that's in where uh, the bowling alley? And oh, the that's, where that's, where that's, where up. that's up. where Kyle ended up. That's where Kyle ended up. Which he is just great spot for he, it. Well, he bought the business of Tommy the Tiger or whatever, right, so they right. still do that. Yes, that's great. Sh- yeah, it was a good a need. Move for I mean, him. if I had the money back from that inflatable place, which is now dog eared books, but like there's something cursed about that corner. Mm. I noticed they haven't been run into lately. But when it was oh, like the man. inflatable place, I think two, three cars run into that building. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was like a place for kids. <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. You would drive by and they'd have the glass things with wood on it. <sighs> well, yeah. Yeah. Russell I remember that happening. Yeah, we're a we're a weird town right now. Yeah. But that was, you're right. I came in one just afternoon just to scope it. Yeah, I, I was canvassing. Little, I was a little damaged. I was, <laughs> from my the previous experience to that, I was a little raw, but my son still wanted to do martial arts, and you guys were great. It really worked out good. We, we had a good, really good man. experience with that's, that place. That's good news. Because uh, I'd, I'd remember that when I'd started seeing you on campus, because of, yeah. of working with Dr. Gleason, I'd yeah. had at least, it, it, I'd remembered running into you. I, think, I, I don't know if we established that at that time or not, but um, uh, we filmed you a couple of times. We filmed you uh, at the gallery, right. and I think that you came over to the library one time, and we maybe filmed you there. Possibly, yeah. I, mean, I filmed like 150. Yeah. Th- well, it's a people. high profile gig, and I try to get it out, and it's always disheartening when people are like, There's a gallery on campus. Like, I'm one guy. I'm trying to do my best yeah. to get the word out. I'll even have art majors say, Where's the gallery at? It's like, Well, right by the office. That thing. Oh, that's the gallery. They just sometimes don't even know what it's called. Kind of like how I grew. I mean, they might not have a a blueprint of how to be an art either. Like, I never went to a museum until I was in college. Practically done. Yeah. Uh, my art museum was 7-Eleven's comic book <laughs> aisle and cartoons and things in, like, the Safeway comic book aisle because it was a different time. You know, my mom would plant me at the comic books and then she would shop. And then when I was done, she'd come by, okay, let's go. And I knew I couldn't leave that area. I would just stay and look at all the comic books. I, that, I had many a day like that yeah. at, the, at the grocery store. Sure. Okay. Food market. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a different time now. I, you know, I don't know. I, it gets weird when you're a parent, you just kind of, I don't know. I'm, I, I try to give as much, rope as i can to the kids but i, I guess i just worry well, how old are they now well my son's gonna be 16 oh. and my daughter's gonna be 13 and uh it's a whole other adventure man because like he's a, a man now basically he's just about you know i mean two years you're basically a man they say but, yeah they say man i didn't get my shit together till i was like almost 25. oh i'm still wor- I'm I'm working still, on it yeah i'm, I'm 46 t- let's be real here I'm, so am i big time so am i like yeah. I, I joke around with jeff woods and just like other people that i still talk to about things and i'm like you guys did not tell me it was gonna be this way yeah I, and i was like my, i i don't know i kind of feel like my dad liked to pretend like he had things figured out yeah and then like i had a revelation i was like shit nobody has anything figured out no i, I maybe mistakenly or not i've always been really honest with my kids i mean i've t- i've i tell them anything i've ever done i'll answer honestly and i want that honesty from them and i tell them you know don't just you should respect adults but because someone's an adult an adult doesn't mean they're mentally an adult uh adults are just older looking children and i've told them that and sometimes they're older older looking children with money sometimes they're older looking children with an axe to grind sometimes all that and um my son is he gets it pretty pretty good i mean he's always been kind of an old soul i don't even know how to describe it he just we're really good buddies. I'm real tight with my son. I'm good, good buddies with my sister or sister, <laughs> Not with my sister. but with my daughter as well. But my, my son, we're, we're real close. Cause I also raised him like as a stay at home mom, which was the hardest fucking job ever for about two, three years where I would teach at night. 
my wife would come home, we'd high five. I, you know, I'd go do my adjunct duties at tech at night and then I was able to get tenure track. Now I'm a full professor. That's that's great. How long did you work on camps before you start, uh, before you got slipped tenure into track. your job, tenure track and everything? Yeah. It took me about four years, three years, I guess. Cause I came in 2001, um, nine 11 was my second week of work. Oh man. I was in eighth grade. Yeah. And, uh, it seemed like the world was ending. I'm in Arkansas, 20 hours from home. Everything's nuts. And, uh, anyway, so that was when I started and then, yeah, I was an adjunct about three years. And so tech claims you tech has been very good to me, but I also wish sometimes you'd get acknowledged that you've been there sometimes. And it's a minor thing. You get no extra money for it, but all they do give you these yearly, or once you're 20 years, you get like an award thing and everything. Next year's my 20th year being with tech. I've done the same fucking job for 19 years, but they count me officially since 2005. So I'll have to work four more years to get my 20. Oh, and you're just yeah. kind of like, Sigh. but you know, I also have a job. So fucking yay. <laughs> so. I mean, the number of people, like you were saying, I I tell everyone I was like I I'm extremely fortunate. I'm so fortunate to have a job. that I was able. Well, I mean, Moralton has had the guy I replaced worked there for like thirty years. Yeah, I mean, and they only have two history profs. The other guy's been there for twenty. Mm-hmm. And I was just able. I started adjuncting like a semester before that guy retired, and it just worked out. It just things just work out. My son's worried about it. like how am I gonna. What am I going to do? You know, man, find something you like. The the thing I can, I mean, every job's a job. Even the job, I love my job. I love my job. But some days days I don't like it very much. Because any job, it's called a job because you don't like it. You know what I'm saying? So some days I don't like it. And I'm going, man, I've almost done this 20 years. And to retire, I'm going to have to do another 20 more at least. How am I going to do that? And then some days I wake up and go, how am I not going to do it? This is awesome. Yeah. So it, it's just day by day. But I told myself, I love what I do. Like I get it. When I go to my job, I don't go, God, I got to work today and everything. I get to see these cool ki- kids. They're making art. We get to talk about it. It's fun. So, I mean, I don't have to go. I've worked the jobs where like, I mean, you seem like the kind of guy too. That's probably done a lot of different jobs i did too. i've roofed i've worked construction mowed lawns flipped freaking pancakes all day washed dishes delivered newspapers you know. i was a used car salesman man everything you, you just said you win plus car <laughs> yeah. salesman plus selling a car yeah, yeah. to someone you win oh man I, but i did man and i until i until i was you know what was great for me is i i went through a period when i was like 18 to 23 where i was doing i was just in a circle man i had all these different jobs i dropped out of school a few times like th- two total times and then like went back when i was 23 and then I became a student worker. Mm-hmm. Like on my first semester back, I'd, I was back for a semester, and then the next semester, Jeff Woods became department head and hired me uh, as a student worker. I'd done an independent study with him, and from then forward, it was just like uh, poor student worker and poor martial arts guy. That oh, was what I was doing. So when you were dating, oh yeah, yeah let me talk to you about being an artist. <laughs> and dating people who aren't in the arts meeting their family and being humiliated i think part of the reason why i've been humiliated and you just you get used to it because they're like oh you study school i mean probably some of the funnier times was i grew up as a house painter my grandfather had a house painting company mom and pop thing it was really small but since the time I could walk, I was on cleanup crew. And then when I got better at it, he started paying me more. And I was like on the crew. And so when I went to college, I would work for other house painters. And I can remember being, you know, and the homeowner would come in and chit chat sometimes. And I can remember painting in Vermilion, this one house. And the, the, this lady comes in and we're talking. She's like, oh, you, you know, you look college age. Do you go to USD? And I go, yeah. And she goes, well, what do you study? And I said, painting. And she looked at me like, either, either she looked at me like, fucking smart ass or... <laughs> painting and i said i could tell she was hesitant and i said no like art painting like art like i make paintings and she just kind of slowly backed out of the room 
Why are you doing Because she had no response to that. In her mind, she's like, well, good luck with that, buddy. Man, why are people that? Like, what is like with what you told your son? Like, that, that is all, like, if somebody just would have been like, you know what? Do what I ultimately did, which was it. Like, I tell people this a lot. When I was 18, getting out of high school, I was like, here was my mindset. And, and I felt like this was, a, it, it was like a thought implant. Yeah. I'm going to go be a radiology technician because Cause it made money or it, it's a two year degree okay. and you're going to, you're going to only two, not four. And it pays $40,000 a year. Like that was the big, that was like, that is what was taught to me. Like go be uh go get a, some sort of short term certificate and get sense. into this. And I was like, it, it makes sense to some people, I guess. But for me, who I went on and got my master's in in history, history. right? How's that going? <laughs> exactly, right? I can't tell you how many times, like, in like people history. that were major influences yeah. in my life, yeah, and and like like my aunts and uncles and just different people. I loved them, and they'd be like, "Yeah, you need to be a radiology yeah, technician." Exactly. My mother's dream. Do you know Doctor Dalton, the no. dentist? He has no, those no. really funny sayings on his. Like we cater to cowards. Okay, it's right on Main I've seen, Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Great guy. I've taught his daughter. Good artist. He's an artist, you know. He and his part time. He's very good. In fact, he's he was good when I first met him years ago. And he's even improved, but he paints for fun, and he's never really had any classes. Uh, I don't believe or anything. He's he's pretty good. He does landscapes and things, and uh, like he's literally living my mother's dream for me because she's like can't you be a dentist and then like on the weekends you could paint and i always tell him that and he just laughs like like you you are the embodiment of my mother's dream vision for me because he <laughs> that's, does, that's funny, what he man. does but he uh my my mom i told this at her funeral too because it was it's funny you know you you should celebrate people too like it was really sad but i liked to tell funny stories about my mom because she would say crazy shit you know she was a very funny lady and she'd say like you know I don't care if you turn out to be a serial killer. I'll, I, I just love you. I'd be disappointed, but I'll always love you. And I always thought that was like fucked up. And then I have kids. I'm like, if, even if they're serial killers, I'd love them. But boy, would I be disappointed. But the main thing she would say is you can be anything you want to be, Neil. You, you can be anything you want to be. Mom, a lot of stuff involves math. And she was a, so, she was a realist. She'd be like, yeah, you should just keep drawing. Because <laughs> like she knew. She knew I was terrible at math. As soon as I threw that in her face, she'd be like, yeah, you should just draw stuff. See, see like, man, I am terrible at math, too. I, I mean, atrociously oh, horrible. Yeah, like, couldn't pass the praxis portion of the math. Yeah. Took it, like, a couple of times before yeah. I was able to get through. Yeah. And... Uh, it just made total sense for me to go the LFA route. And yeah. But you just, if you don't have somebody in front of you saying, like, you know, follow your dreams, dude. Because yeah. everything's worked out well for me. I remember, Doctor. You remember Kerry Roberts? I know the name. He I was did. a history guy. Yeah, didn't um, know him. One, he moved. He teaches at Liberty University now. Mm -hmm. But I remember one time when we were filming with Doctor Gleason, he was like, "You know, you're gonna have to give that martial arts stuff up sometime, right?" And I was just like, "Eh." It's like now we have 250 students. We yeah, have an eight thousand. Awesome. We're just upgraded to eight thousand square foot facility it's uh you know and it's like but just how people how people perceive how they, what they're trying to help i don't know if that was really trying to help in a way it was kind of dickish i guess but i think sometimes in my fan they were trying to help like my mom had her brother who's a very successful he's an eye i can't even pronounce what he does he's retired now but he operated on the back of the eye Ooh. who fucking knew anyway <laughs> he, could, he did like he literally restored people's fucking vision from nothing okay uh, and made, it, it, she had him call me like, you know, dentistry is a really, you know, like you get to make these molds for teeth. Like, dude, isn't there math? He's like, yeah. But I mean, even people in the arts would tell me and Tammy, you know, one of you should get, we didn't want to do K through 12, even though now I look at it, I'm like, I'd really get off on teaching art to, I do classy club at Sequoia and everything. And oh, I love nice. them little kids, man. I don't know if I could do it every day, but I enjoy teaching little kids. And I think maybe I would have liked that, but they were really down on us. Like, you know, one of you should really be K through 12. You're both not going to get teaching jobs. I mean, even like really liberal 
college professors were telling us both that and we just thought we would go home and go well do you want to do k through 12 no well i don't want to do it i thought about it i yeah. went most of the way through the program yeah i got really. all the way to phase two of secondary ed Man. uh and i it ended up putting me graduating my undergrads like 170 hours or something i just didn't do the internship or exceptionalities or psych hmm. uh, i didn't do the student teaching but i was just like man i just I wanted to do high school. That yeah. Was, uh, but, and then I, was, I sat back and I was like, well, you know, gym's going great. I'm going to get my yeah. master's. Yeah, you got to slow down and take stock, man. And, yeah. and we did that. We're like, well, we don't have kids. We have relatively small. We both of our, we were fortunate. We were like on the last wave of our school was we both got in full ride. We took out loans to live because you couldn't really work and be in the art program. Art takes up a lot of time, as does training. You know what I'm talking. It's very similar in the discipline. Uh, so we couldn't really have jobs, and not like we were selling art <laughs> real great. So we took what we had, but we had relatively small loans and things. And so we just like let's just try, and it worked out. And I'm just gonna jump in here too and say I probably got to go and like hey no three no minutes because my daughter gets out of school hey totally like, fine let's uh, let's start uh, winding it down sure. I, I I've been meaning to start like as I was telling my wife I was like I'm gonna implement something on the podcast where I like ask the guests I'm like how long would you like to podcast today because some guests would go for like oh yeah th- forever that, man, man. I'd what, stay another hour we, well hey we could do I'll that come back if you want well, let's do this let's do yeah. this there's an idea I had um. What was that Todd Snyder show you were talking about? The concert? YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's Todd Snyder, uh, the Bluebird Cafe. If you want, Bluebird. let's have you back on at some date we'll just set. And um, I do a Music Unraveled show as a part of this. That's where you saw us talk. What we were doing is reviewing a Todd Snyder show oh, we had see, been I just saw very, I just read the title. I thought, and I thought, oh, my God, they talked yeah, about Yeah, yeah. We, we were just like basically no, reviewing I, okay, the concert. Yeah. So, but like... Um, what we did a while back, you know, the new Tool album came out, oh. and we just like we're sitting here doing this while listening, listening to, to so it. so like yeah, these nice studio headphones. I I've got my TV oh, hooked nice. into the mixer and everything. I would totally so, do that. Yeah, yeah, we do a little. Po- uh, that would be on. awesome. Are you going to the Fort Smith show? Is he going to be in? He's, Fort he's Smith? playing in Fort Smith like November sixth or something like that. Yeah, like it's coming up. I have to go. Yeah. I missed it in Little Rock and I'm going to have to look. I missed that I've last so one. It was such lately. a small venue. Yeah. I'm going to have to go. It's in November. It's in November. I'm they go home they right moved now the date because uh, it was a through the week and I want to say it's like a Friday or Saturday show. I mean, now. I'm just saying I love Todd also by looking at him. Yeah, he's looked healthier. I yeah. want to catch him before. He looked good at the panic okay, show. Good. I will say that. But then okay. Neil Casal died like the next day. Yeah. We talked about that. Yeah. Man, that's so, that's painful. No, November uh, Sunday, th- November third, twenty nineteen, at the Majestic in Fort Smith. Oh my God, I've got to go to that. Yeah, I'm the going, tickets are like ridiculously cheap. If my wife don't want to go, I'm riding with hey, you. Hey, you can, you totally can. Uh, my wife and I, and uh, we've got our our, our bud Olby. He goes uh, like we've seen Panic together like twenty five times. I've got to go times. see Todd Snyder live. I've you haven't seen go. him live yet? I have not. I've I had the Little Rock, uh, and then actually I play in a band. Um, with other with so david blanks is he's the chair of history yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. and nate chapman's the drummer and greg mcna is a history professor too at tech we're black sabbatical we actually played south on main where todd snyder played so i've played in the same venue wow yeah cool and when when i do come back i'll have to tell you because one of my first students ever was adam fawcett oh yeah and i've done a few of his album covers and he's met Todd and oh, hung, wow. they've hung together and he's hung with a few other in fact you should a great podcast would be Adam fucking Fawcett on here yeah because he is hilarious hey and just a great dude yeah yeah no I, I'll uh, I'll see in if fact, I can't get in contact bring with him. him I should bring him along we would all have to be drinking during it though I'm just saying <laughs> I've, got some, I've got some bottles in here we can we can kick <laughs> so, back uh, that's the cool thing about this and I will say at the um, our new gym I'm setting a studio up in there uh-huh. and it's right it's right across the street from campus but neutral spot I never care I don't care having anybody out here some people are like it wait pleasant view where's that or you yeah. know it's, it's you know the area yeah. but uh but like people that have moved in the professors have moved in i've had on and stuff so I, yeah. i've had quite a few uh 
of the folk from tech over but yeah i'm open to do i can do up to four people at once man that would be rad i'll have to get him down here i think he's got a new album coming out and what our usual mo has been he comes to my house and he brings whatever he has left over and some ideas of his booze bottles (laughs) And then I'll usually have some and then we get all liquored up and start passing the sketchbook back and forth and we come up with an idea for his album covers. Nice. And uh, it's a lot of fun and he's just a great dude. I really like it. Like I said, he was, I'm not in the habit of becoming friends with my students until they graduate. And so really there was a few years there where we didn't contact each other and then suddenly we just clicked and we're good buddies i consider him a good friend he's a good guy nice nice you should check out some of his albums if you have yeah yeah well like i said man next time we have you on we'll make it a music unravel we'll, that would talk, be awesome. we'll talk all music I really and, gotta yeah run. okay let's do it man okay sorry i enjoyed it thank you for yeah. having me hey thank you so much neil mr Harry. yeah oh you can just say neil